Umbiakindi, Bipuabe, Napos, Wagge or Winge. Now to our Hawe, so who up in. Now we many can a Hawe, Chris Velardi. Now and now to our ma, Paul Culture Center. Now cultural specialist Omu. He caught a Waha by Kibo, Horipi a man you be oje. My name is Carl Duncan. I'm the executive director of the Poe Cultural Center here at the Pueblo of Pauake, and we're on the Business of Art radio show. Hello, my name is Votan. I'm the uh, founder of Insurgents. All right, thank you, Voltan, for being with us here at the PO. We thank you for um, everything you do as an artist for the community. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about um, yourself, um, Insurgents, and what you're all about? I am... Uh of Maya and Nawa ancestry. I was born and raised in Los Angeles and I am currently living in Albuquerque, New Mexico with my partner Leah, who was also a part of Insurgents. Um, Leah is Laguna, Hopi, Zuni, um, Taos, uh, Diné, and a little bit Cherokee. And she wasn't able to make it today, but um, I guess I'll be speaking on her behalf. So Insurgents, initially began in the year 2000 uh, before Lee and I got together and met. I was part of um, a graffiti crew but also a movement in Los Angeles to represent indigenous people uh, from a different perspective, you know, different than what we've been taught in schools. Uh, Insurgents, the name actually came from the Zapatista uprising that took place in 1994 in southern Mexico. I don't know if uh, some of you folks out there might not be aware of that, but you can look that up. Uh, in 1994, there was a law that was going to go into effect, uh, actually a treaty, the NAFTA, uh, North American Free Trade Agreement, where uh, the U.S., Canada, and Mexico were going to allow for tre- free trade to occur within those three countries. But during that um, uh, treaty signing and, and it going into effect in 1994, there was a an uprising that took place in Chiapas, the southernmost state of Mexico, by uh, different Maya communities that came together. The reason they rose up against NAFTA was because uh, the treaty basically forced the Mexican constitution to change to where they had to change one of their articles. I think it was Article 27 that indicated that the land belonged to the people that worked the land, but because of NAFTA, it had to change to the land now belongs to those who have a title or a deed for the, of the land, right? So the Zapatistas, who are of Mayan um, heritage, their lands were being threatened because NAFTA was going to allow for corporations to come in and take the natural resources of their uh, communities and uh, the La Candona jungle. So anyways, they rose up in arms against that, and we were inspired by that because they uh, were a different type of revolution from the revolutions that we've heard of in the past where it's a socialist uh, influence. This one was an indigenous revolution. So it was completely different where they truly believe that the land should not be harmed or exploited in that manner. Unlike other revolutions in the past where, you know, less people were benefiting, but then when revolutions took place, now more people were benefiting from the exploitation of the land. A lot of times through history, you know, Native people, Indigenous people, they have to fight for, you know, their existence, their survival, their their livelihood. And a lot of times it takes, you know, artists to remind us of that. And I know you, you all with your artwork in communities and about different topics really, you know, bring up these topics and subjects that people need to be aware of. You know, so thank you for everything you've done as far as bringing attention and supporting you know, these issues that, that really do help um, people in their own communities. Um, the, the story behind Insurgents is important. I know you've done a lot of different projects uh, around the country. Maybe you can touch on some other projects that you've worked on. Yeah, I mean, the ones that have uh, had the greatest and latest impact is usually uh, the murals that we've painted. We've painted probably, I'd say, about 35 within the last five years. What's crazy about it is the impact that, you know, these murals have in communities. And the reason I say this um, is because usually when we engage in a lot of communities that we, you know, are unfamiliar with, when we spend this much time painting these pieces, we become part of those communities, right? Because we are actually amplifying whatever um, issue or, or message they want us to address through the works. And it becomes a public piece 
uh, as opposed to, you know, a collector's piece where it's going to end up in somebody's house or in a museum. This is like for the public to view, uh, even non-Native people, for them to view and, as, uh, and engage as well. And one of the most impactful murals that we've done is the one in uh, Duluth, Minnesota, which before um, there was this uh, conversation about missing and murdered indigenous women on such a grand scale as today, we were commissioned to do a piece that represented that. Uh, the, the red jingle dress was uh, the, the symbolic meaning for that moment in time. Now, you know, it's the red hand, but that was one of the largest, if not the largest uh, scale public piece uh, telling that story, but also depicting water protector. So it was right after Standing Rock, we got hired by Honor the Earth and ACO, American Indian Community Housing Organization, to paint this mural that would tell that story. So it was great to see um, the impact it had across Indian country, but also in that community. It forced uh, the local government to address that issue that had been on the back burner for a long time. And community members came out the day the uh, mural was unveiled was uh, really symbolic. It started to rain. There was a lot of elders dancing. There was drumming, and there was a lot of crying, which is, you know, healing in itself. So I think that's one of the greatest experiences that we've had, you know, painting these pieces. There's an, another one, too, um, that I can share with you is a piece that was we painted in Ecuador. So we were hired to be part of a art festival that takes place in uh, I think it's a southernmost state of Ecuador. Uh, it's called Zamora. And we painted um, an indigenous medicine person with a gas mask, wearing a gas mask before the pandemic and all that. And one of the uh, community members came out, and I was sp uh, speaking to him, and he said that he felt the power of the image within him. Right. And I, I, you know, told him to explain why he felt that way. And he said that growing up, walking down those streets, that uh, they would ridicule him. They would call him Tarzan because uh, his community, which is the Shuar, they come from the Amazon. They've been in the Amazon since time immemorial. And uh, they're depicted as being savages because they live in the jungle. And he said that because of that peace, he felt that he could walk with pride because now a person that came outside of Ecuador, outside of the Amazon, to basically paint an image of an indigenous person with dignity uh, basically contradicts all the stereotypes that um, those indigenous peoples have, you know, been uh, suffering for generations. So even though it's a small town and, you know, it's one piece, but I think just the fact that we were able to um, do something like that makes us also feel empowered that we do have a voice, right? We see billboards, imagery that does not reflect our communities, but yet through art, we're able to do that. I mean, imagery and symbols have are really powerful, and a lot of tribes and in their cultures, there's so much tied to what designs mean. You know, a lot of the imageries and, and designs that you guys have, you know, for different communities, I know, you know, it touches people. And I know around here um, in Tewa country, you know, we love your little Pueblo dancers, and uh, I think people really are drawn to that. And, you know, here at the Poe, we're trying to build community and support artists uh, like yourselves that really are promoting, you know, positive imagery that are that's authentic. And, and we try to support them by, you know, not only teaching the arts here or with our exhibits, but through uh, this a new event that we kind of created in the past two years called Pathways. And, you know, you all have been part of that and uh, I know you've even had some children's activities during the pathways and invited the public to come and uh, participate so uh, maybe you could talk about events like that about pathways and kind of what it means to you as an artist. Uh, I think it's a an amazing opportunity uh, especially because as a native person from Maya ancestry Central America um, we don't have tribal IDs and we're not allowed to to vend in certain you know you know places or events because we don't have travel IDs. Although my partner does have a travel ID, but um, I think this is even greater because it's organized, put together, 
in a native community itself, right? So it goes to benefit that community, but also to the diversity of people that come from different uh, nations to engage in it, I think is extremely important. Um, not to disrespect or uh, disagree with, you know, Indian market, but the uh, average consumer for Indian market is not an, a native person, you know what I mean? And this is more for like native peoples, even uh, native folks who have great income can come to this event because it just doesn't show, you know, the artists that are commercial artists, but there's also fine artists as well, which I think is really important. So it, it opens the door up for more folks to have an opportunity at being to you know, make a living off of their work. And I think that's the most important thing about things like this is that I always say that without the arts, there is no culture. And this is proof of that because all the arts, whether it's dance, which we have here right at the event, uh, the visual arts, the foods, all those, those are different arts. And that's what creates the culture. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up the, the dancers and, and you know, we have a call for performers to come out. So we try to do as much um, community participation, you know, so we're not deciding who dances. We're actually opening it up. We really want people to come uh, because they want to come, because they want to participate and they want to um, join this value-based event. You know, I think that's the difference is that we're trying to promote cultural values community values. Of course, there's the economic uh, factor that I think a lot of other markets, um, you know, have to uh, utilize, but we want to be the true authentic event and program that really shows the whole range of artistry that people have. It's not, it is, you know, it isn't just gallery ready art, you know, it's it's pieces of regalia that people are looking for because there's a feast day coming up. And they know to come to these events and buy a belt, buy some moccasins, uh, while at the same time they can buy a painting. You know, they can buy a sculpture, they can buy some pottery, some jewelry, a t-shirt. So there's a whole range of uh, different types of artists out there that we've seen the artists really needing these opportunities. And we're now we're having hundreds of artists come together. Um, and I, I'm really amazed at how many artists are out there. There's three major uh, markets out there in Santa Fe all at one time. And that how many thousands of artists are there? You know, it's amazing that everybody's out there. And we just encourage, you know, everybody, other organizations, people in leadership positions to, you know, look at what's the community need and try to find ways that is a healthy way forward that doesn't, you know, always uh, look at the past as the only way to do things, but tries to find new ways to create new traditions by sticking to our cultural values. And in the end, you know, it helps heal our communities. If we have these opportunities, if we have these avenues for artists, whether they're dancing or singing or creating films, that they're able to have a place that feels good, a venue that really does appreciate, doesn't stereotype or try to uh, make money off of them, but it's actually for them and for them to be highlighted. That's, I feel like, what Pathways is about and artists like you all, you know, are about the same thing. So I appreciate that. And all the other hundreds of artists that come here to Puake and at the Po, it feels good that we're on the right track because our numbers keep going up. Our participation keeps going up. This was kind of born out of the pandemic and um, seeing artists having financial hardship. And we wanted to do something about that. So we created a, another market. And um, man, that just blew up into what it is now. So you know, I really appreciate the different things that you all do. Um, do you have any thoughts or suggestions for other artists, uh, maybe upcoming artists, on how to continue practicing their work, uh, maybe who's struggling, or some artists who, you know, be wondering if art's something that is worthwhile to move into? Yeah, definitely. I, um, I think one of the most important things is, um, you know, how committed you are to the work that you do. Like, if, if you love what you do, and you're willing to do it, even if it's not um, popular at the time, and and be able to find clever ways of successfully pulling through those moments, right? So, you know, we we base a lot of our work around three words that we constantly talk about, um, and they all start with the letter C, right? So 
one of them is to be creative, right? Which is we're all born with creativity in one way or another, right? And that's part of our traditions too is being creative. So be creative, but also be clever with your creation, right? Uh, which allows you to be different than the next artist, right? There's always ways that you can tweak and change and, you know, transform art images, designs to where you'll go so far down that path that it will become your identity, right? So be clever with your work. And then most importantly, I think, is to be content with the work that you do. Because if you're not content, then you're going you're gonna to feel like it's a dead-end job, like it's a slave labor, you know what I mean? So most importantly, I think it's the fact that if this is what you want to do, be happy doing it. Enjoy doing it. And even when it's hard to do it, enjoy doing it then too. Because that's just the reality of life. Like it's ups and it's, you know downs. That's just part of it. And you have to be able to navigate through both of those. Yeah, you're, you're, you're correct, man. You've been doing this for 23 years now. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, um, it's really cool the things that, that you all are doing. You know, working with other organiz Native organizations, supporting them, being creative and how to, you know, get your imagery and your message across to you know, new groups of people while supporting, you know, uh, those organizations' mission. Uh, do you have any favorite artists out there that you'd like to mention that people should be aware of? Hmm. Nah, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a, a lot of art out that I, that I see often. I mean, there's a huge list, and some of them I probably don't even know their names or won't say their names correctly, but... Um, I think one of the most important things that I that I've seen, um, especially in, in Indian country, is up and coming brands that are taking it to to the next level. You know what I mean? Where they're using their traditional designs. Where as before, you know, you look at Pendleton and everybody would think that the Chief Joseph blanket that that's the staple for Indian country, and that's not you know it's, it doesn't represent every community. So it's great to be able to see that. There's all these different styles, patterns, uh, designs that um, don't just speak for one group of people, you know what I mean, but that are continuing, continuously changing. We just mentioned, you know, the blankets that are produced by Pendleton, but then you have that brand from, I believe Is it's 8th gen? generation, mm -hmm. yeah, which also shows us that we can do it ourselves as well, right? Because they came up with some really amazing designs for their blankets. So that, I feel, is, is a very important thing. We were just talking about the pop characters, right? And how there is no native representation, right? And then there's, what, 10, 20,000 probably characters out there? So that doesn't mean that it's not possible. We can do that, right? So now that we have the access to all these manufacturers not just here in, you know, Turtle Island, but throughout the world, there's more access for us to be able to do these type of things. And now that also folks in, uh, you know, Indian country are becoming more successful, there could be investors. I mean, just the fact that we have all these folks that benefit from gaming in their communities, there could be philanthropy, you know, they can invest in other artists to help Indian country come up together, you know what I mean? So... There's a lot of talent, man. There's a lot of young talent, too. A lot of, you know, musicians, too, that, you know, um, you are creating an opportunity. Not just you, but this event is creating an opportunity for folks like that to have a platform. And I think that's extremely important in this moment. I've seen a lot of artists submit their applications and they're right in there. Two years ago was my first time I've ever shown it at a market. And I've continued to be at Pathways ever since then. Or last year was my first time I've ending and I'm going to try it again. I mean, that's that's what it's all about, trying to get people to um, be proud of who they are, what they do. You know, I always say, you know, if you're an artist, you can't help but be an artist. You know, you know I went to IAI, and there's so many people that are creative there. And you can tell, you know, they're just, it's just in them. You know, there's, there's no if, ands, or buts about it. It's in them. And so, you know, the more opportunities that we can provide to them, uh, like I said, because they're the ones who teach us how to be good people, you know. And that's how cultures stay healthy, is by these stories that are uh, within the designs or just their own personal story that they may show in it. You know, it, it doesn't even need to be pretty, but the message comes across. Mm -hmm. And however, it's, it's conceptual 
or it's an installation or it's music or it's film. You know, a lot of people are really excelling in that. And I'm really, you know, happy to see, you know, friends out there uh, doing so much work. You know, now we have film and everybody's really seeing that, you know, we're, when we do our best to try to get some people at Pathways because we really want to promote what they're doing and encourage other people to do that, get into acting, get into directing other avenues, you know, uh, writing or even just farming, you know, and f- trying to find creative ways to be sustainable in your own community. So, you know, it's really great to see these different people out there, um, Native people that are really excelling. It's great to see so many people doing amazing things. Man, they're like, they're really killing it. Like they're doing so well, you know, they sell out and they do yeah. another thing. You know, a couple of years ago, that individual wasn't doing that, you know, yeah. they were just trying to figure it out. So it is possible, you know, it's mm-hmm. really cool. And it is asp- inspiring to see, you know, where where it's all going. And we're we're hoping just to support that, you know, wherever people want to go, you know, we want to just be another venue to help people. You know, thank you. Do you have anything else you want to add? Or yeah, say? I mean, I, I think that, you know, like as a final thought, we have to realize that we have to change, right? Um, again, if we bring up, you know, Indian market, like it's, it's kind of stagnated a lot of the art that people think is native art. And this event actually allows for like the entire spectrum of art, right? You just talked about, you know, farming as an art, right? Which I think is crucial to our community, especially with climate change, right? So that's really important. Like you're never going to see a a farmer have a booth at Indian market, you know what I mean? So it, I think that's one of the things that makes this like really important is that you are able to um, speak to any type of art form. And we have to evolve with time as indigenous people. Like the art, I love traditional art. Uh, like it's really expensive. Not anybody just can consume it, but the traditions are changing as well. So there's commercial artists now that don't get a chance to sell in other places but can sell here. And what's really important about that is that it creates an opportunity not just for that artist but for the next many generations to come that know and will know that there's an opportunity because we've been told so many times, you know, even when I went to school, when I was in college, the reason I dropped out, you know, when I was, I had a full scholarship and I was doing great. And at the end of the semester, they were like, well, we're going to have a critique. We're going to critique your art. All your professors are going to come together and talk about your art. And they all got together and they said, um, we like your art. We like your technique. We like your style. But we just don't know how we would market this. Wow. Right? And I was like, dang, like I'm, I'm paying or... Whoever got me that scholarship, you know what I mean? All that money to come to this school for them to tell me that there's no market for what I was doing, right? Luckily, as I was growing up at that time, I saw that there was other markets that were being created by people of color. You know, like hip-hop, like gangster rap, like NWA, right? When they came out, that type of music was getting no airplay, but yet they sold millions of albums without the help of a record label. So that's proof that we can and have been doing that. And events like this are what can open the door, the floodgates for people to come and do their art without the fear of believing if there is or there isn't a market for what they do. I agree. There's a place. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you. Thank you for being here with us and talking a little about yourself and pathways and um you know sharing some some wisdom um oh yeah you want us to know how we can follow you so we have tiktok instagram facebook twitter oh it's it's all under insurgents which is spelled without vowels n-s-r-g-n-t-s uh, or you can go to the website nsrgnts.com we don't spell insurgents with an i because We believe in the collective and not in the me or I. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
Hi, this is Jocelyn Sanchez. I'm the Poe Marketplace Specialist. If you're an indigenous artist, dance group, musician, food vendor, nonprofit organization, or fashion designer, and you would like to apply for the Pathways Indigenous Arts Festival 2023, you can apply at poecenter.org slash pathways. Stay up to date with all of our events by visiting poecenter.org, P-O-E-H center.org, and follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Poe Cultural Center. Thank you KSFR and Nakona Burgess for allowing us to take over Business of Art. <laughs>